Hi, I'm Charlie Snow. And I'm Drew Gray here reporting for the Lobby Observer. A few days ago, Lobby's own Sean Levine sat down with Sean Tan, a senior here at WHS and president of the Interact Club. Interact Club is involved in many different types of community service and pours many hours into helping out around town. Out to you, Sean. Thanks, Drew and Charlie. I'm here with WHS Interact Club President Sean Tam. Now, Sean, what exactly does the Interact Club do? Thanks, Sean, for the question. Um, so, the Interact Club is actually a volunteer group uh, focused on community service in the Westboro and Westboro High School community. And we do a lot of partnering with uh, local clubs, um, community service groups to help out everyone in the community. Yeah. And what are some events that the Interact Club has participated in? Um, so we've done a large range of um, activities depending on what is called upon us. So last year, uh, actually two years ago, we did uh, food packaging or supplies packaging for the veterans, the Veterans Day. We also did, um, we packaged little like chocolate boxes at the Whittier Rehab Hospital. Uh, last year we helped out at the election. Uh, we installed a little library in the front of the school. And um, yeah, we have like a recycling film, plastic recycling thing that we go on. So yeah, I think the thing about Interact is we're like pretty versatile. Um, we do a lot of different things. And what's been your favorite event to work on so far? Um, my favorite event, I would say, is probably the Trex Pack Plastic Recycling um, event. Uh, just because it's been a continuous event and we've really brought that from like a community level to um, focusing it into the high school. So we're trying to implement um, the recycling boxes at the high school um, in January and having the Westboro High School student body to also participate in it. What are some upcoming events? So this year upcoming, uh, like I said, we're going to have the implementation campaign of Trex, uh, Trex at the high school. We're also planning to celebrate um, the Rotary Club's, spoiler alert, uh, Rotary Club's um, 40th anniversary in combating polio disease. We're trying to figure out if we can do something like uh, regional with other uh, interact clubs, maybe to do a charity ball or something. That's something we did two years ago, right before the pandemic, and we'll try to make that happen this year. And how can students get involved in the interact club? It's actually very easy. Um, if you would like to participate in the club, uh, email me um, or find Mr. DeBoer, um, and he will put you in contact with me, and I will add you to the email list. Um, but in the meantime, you can follow our Instagram page, uh, Interact Club Westboro, something like that. But yeah, we, we post a lot of what we do, and yeah, follow it up. And you mentioned that you work with other clubs and organizations. Can you name some of these other organizations, organizations that you work with? Yeah, um, so Interact Club, we our, our biggest partner is definitely the Rotary Club of Westboro, and that's um, really how we get a lot of our local um, town-wide uh, connections from. So they would have a lot of opportunities for us. Um, so the Trex Plastic Program is actually uh, was actually suggested uh, from the Rotary Club, and also um, the Rotary Club. Um, other than the Rotary Club, we, we also did um, a partnership with the Westboro Youth and Family Services um, to talk about like uh, mental health problems in Westboro High School, and we had a meeting with them about it. So yeah, a lot of different groups, Westboro Connects. Too. Alright, thank you for having me with us. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. It was fantastic to hear from Mr. Tan about a popular club here at WHS. Yes, I'm glad we got to hear some valuable information about Interact Club and what they do here in Westboro. Next, Sean came up with Ms. Greer, the choir director here at WHS, to find out more about the choral program. Thanks, Drew and Charlie. I'm here with the WHS chorus teacher, Ms. Greer. Now, Ms. Greer, how was the pandemic last year? Uh, affected this the chorus program in general? Well, for the majority of last year, we were unable to sing in school, and we were finally able to sing in April. So throughout the entire school year, we were doing handbells, hand chimes, just doing different things like that in our program, rather than singing in school. When we were at home, we were able to sing individually at school, which was uh, then at school, which was great, um, but it definitely did impact the program. Yeah, and do you think that the challenges you faced last year have made how do you think they've laid a better groundwork for this year? Uh, I think so, in some ways. We were able to do a lot of more individualized singing so we could focus more on individual technique. And it, it was almost like we're in starvation mode. The students were starving for that choral experience. So this year, the students are really motivated and really want to sing and really want to do the best they can as if they're trying to make up for last year 
with everything they lost in the uh, what they normally would get in the choral program. Yeah, and I've noticed that there were a few different ensembles. Can you tell us a little bit more about the different ensembles here yeah. in the WHS course? Absolutely. So we have three academic ensembles. The first period is women's chorale, um, and that is for voices that are sopranos and altos. That's an auditioned group. The next group is concert choir. That's for voices that are soprano, alto, tenor, and bass. And that is also an auditioned ensemble. And then we have our third period mixed chorus, which is your all comp choir. You don't have to audition, you just sign up and sing. And we have an awesome time in that group. We also have five co curricular ensembles. The first one is chamber singers, which is an a cappella group um, that focuses on um, repertoire from medieval, Renaissance, all the way up to the current time period. And that's an auditioned group. And then we have four a cappella groups we have Don't Panic. Uh, Harmony and Heels, Double Take, and Numbers Only. And where will, are there any upcoming events where people will be able to see these uh, choirs perform? Absolutely. So we have our a cappella concert, which is known as the Vocal Pops. That's on December 1st at 7 o'clock in the auditorium. It's free. So that will feature Don't Panic, Numbers Only, Harmony and Heels, um, Double Take, and Chamber Singers as well. And then a few weeks later on December 16th, it's a Thursday, that is the choirs and the orchestra concert. Um, and that concert's a lot of fun. It will feature the three academic choirs and it will also feature the two orchestra. Thank you once again, Sean. It's awesome to learn about each ensemble and find out more about where you can see the students perform. Agreed, Charlie. It's nice to see that Miss Gear is back to singing with their students following the pandemic. This was Charlie Snow and Drew right here at the Lobby Observer signing off.